this is all part of this whole thing. That's why I asked Eva the last question, because I thought it, it, this this whole f secret meeting and the reason I'm, I, I'm calling it secret meeting in the title is because I don't know if you all know, but if you say and, and to the word Bil Bilderberg too much, they take you off the algorithm. They they go after you. I've seen um, another video of these uh, guys who were actually at the building talk about that. Also, Franco said that he was getting uh, they were shifting his numbers. And that's true. That's not a, like they do this. And so I called it a secret meeting that few people are talking about. And, uh, you know, the, the this is after a two year gap, right, for the quote unquote pandemic. Um, and the NATO Secretary General came. And of course, um, this was in the what was it? The Oriental uh, Hotel in D.C. Franco just went. Max just went. Um, another journalist just went. And that's it. I mean, they they normally have hundreds of people covering this. And I don't know what happened in between then and now. Well, they kept it secret. That's why they kept it really quiet. They kept it on the download. You couldn't get ahead of it this time. Okay. And then it just popped up last second. In fact, Burmis was on the show Friday. He got wind of it Thursday, like late, uh, that they were looking. And the way they were able to discover it kind of leaked on out is that the EU uh, some uh -huh. members of the EU had it on their schedule and they were able to, to kind of grab it that way and it leaked out that way. And all of a sudden it was like, you know, blowing the whistle. Um, we were on Friday day, we were asking David Crow, who was in DC, David, get over to this area. Here's the hospital. Here's the, uh, the, uh, the hotel, um, get on over there, see what's going on. But that's why there was not a lot of information this time, mm. because I think that people are starting to put things together. And uh, with that being said, you know, they're going to say, hey, why are some of these people here, CEOs and talking with all these different lawmakers and whatnot? So, I mean, um, yeah, they kept it quiet and eventually some stuff leaked out. And that's why I got some bodies over there. So, yeah. Yeah. So it, this, it, it included heads of NATO, CIA, mm -hmm. uh, GCHQ, the U.S. National Security Council, two European prime ministers. And of course, tech billionaires and Henry Kissinger. This article, by the way, is from The Guardian, and it's uh, Medissa Beely put it out on Telegram, and it's the the journalist's name is uh, escapes my mind right now, but uh, he's one of the few more independent journalists that remain at The Guardian. So that's the reason I put up a, a Guardian article because um, of of that. But um, you know, the so slide. I'm going to go on slide 13. So. Um, this the the conference is a high level council of war headlined by Secretary General of NATO uh, Bilderberg veterans Jen Stolenberg, who joined the Mandarin Oriental Hotel by the Ukrainian ambassador to the U.S. Oksana Marakova, and that's who uh, we were talking about earlier, who has these ties and the CEO of uh, Nafto Gas, the state owned Ukrainian oil and gas company, and um, you know they met in this whole secret secret elite era and you we're going to watch some of the videos that uh, max posted i forgot to put franco's video but maybe we can find it and of course uh, there's video screens everywhere so they could bring in people via zoom zelensky is of course reported to have um come in as well and uh palantir who pasta is, is going to explain really remind everybody who they are whitney webb has done tons of work on on palantir but uh, was set up by the Builder Group insider uh, Peter Thiel uh, and Gray Zone. Every, a lot of people have, have written countless articles on them and agreed to give digital uh, support. So Palantir agreed to give digital support to the Ukrainian army. And that was according to a tweet by the country's deputy prime minister. Now, we know that when Pasta and I talk about imperialism, when we talk about these entities, right? there's a reason why we don't separate the the COVID agenda, the globalist agenda from this the imperialism because it's all tied together. And nothing proves that point more than this meeting right here where you have big pharma, you have a surveillance state, you have politicians, you have billionaires, you have the CIA, all these people coming together. So it's absolutely stupid and really, really grinds my gears when I see the left separate the COVID agenda as if it's any, it's separate from this whole entity. And I just wanted to say that quickly, Pasta, because I think that needs to be said. 
Yeah, well, Palantir founder is Peter Thiel, who was also at this meeting as well, too. Uh, and the crazy thing about it is that Pal he also was with Facebook for quite some time, and now he then invested and bought into Rumble. So a lot of people are, are understanding what a controlled opposition is. It's not just controlling things on one side, it's controlling things on both sides. And there's uh, Peter Thiel is a perfect example of that this software company has been involved with when it comes to uh, working with militaries around the world or friendly militaries and whatnot. And it's kind of the same reason why we would question like, you know, the Elon Musk, you know, with his Skylink or whatever you call that situation like that. It seems like everybody's working hand in hand and whatnot, but that's who Palantir is. There's a new uh, CEO of Palantir and that person was also involved in the Bilderberg meeting. But it is just one of those things when you have to start saying to yourself, what is going on at these meetings? Not the fact that we could just point fingers and go, oh, what's going on? But this is the head of like, you know, you, like you mentioned, the head of the CIA was there. You know, this is started, this is Kissinger. This is started, this is a Rockefeller group that was started basically right after World War II. And a lot of some of the decisions they've sat around these big tables and talked about have come to fruition. You know what I'm saying? Like the EU and whatnot. So, I mean, these are all the heads that need to be there. All the people who control what you hear, what you say, what you can say, what you're allowed to say, and all the enforcers involved, including lawmakers too as well. So, I mean, it's just, it, it is something that we have to start looking into more. I think it does kind of shine a light of what's going on. People have been covering this stuff for years, fam, including the Alex Jones and Mike Tracy was out one years ago and Jason Burmis and all these guys have been looking at this stuff. Luke Grindowski, we are a change. Um, this is everything we've talked about when it comes to a one world government and whatnot. Uh, I was looking for a little bit more of the Trump connections, like we saw Pompeo and Kushner in the past go to these situations. I was trying to look and see if there was any Putin kind of involved uh, involvement here as well. So I have to look into it more to see if we got any more links there, but I have not seen a lot of those particular links, especially when it's coming from the Russian Federation. Yeah. And just a reminder, you know, Klaus Schwab, the head of Very Davos years. was yeah. also there um and chairman for it, many years yeah 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 he was the this in the steering committee um and you know we've been talking about the great reset we've been talking about the the whole disruption of the global financial system that whole thing for for a while now you know like i said a lot of people were covering it before now when it's been accepted after it being called the conspiracy smoothie now some people have jumped up and, and you know touched the surface levels of it, but it's been a thing for a while. Also, there was um, the uh, CEO of oil giants BP, Shell, and Total, and the post pandemic health with the CEO of Pfizer and GlaxoSmithKline, who uh, who are the Wall Street investors. I mean, so you have big farming of Wall Street, you have all these entities, and of course. It's just not, it's not being covered. Like Pasta said, it was extremely secretive, but um, William Burns, of course, William Burns is a uh, former US ambassador to Russia and he was elected for, to be the, uh, uh, on Bilderberg's uh, committee, the steering committee a few months before Joe Biden gave him the job. And then he resigned his, his seat. And then four other active intelligence chiefs uh, attended, including the head of the UK government's communication headquarters, the director of France's external intelligence agencies, DGSE, and the leader of US cybersecurity and infrastructure security agency and Biden's national security advisor, Jake Sullivan. So Jake you Sullivan. have yeah. like everybody's name right here. You have uh, David Petraeus also, um, former spy chief, and John Sowers, uh, now a board member of the Bilderberg Group, who was a former M16. So this 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 whole thing um, it encompasses all of them. And you can't forget about Kissinger, who has been attending this event since 1957. Yep. Yeah, like okay. I said, this, this started right after World War II. You know what I'm saying? This was the merger in the beginning of the CIA following and taking orders. It's a Rockefeller type group, a Rockefeller group. And uh, like, these are the people, these are the masters of the universe right here, right now. Right. These are the, you know, fascists um, without the uniform, without the Klan suit. These are the people that are, are are discussing the things that encompass millions of people, that involve millions of people. And how is that allowed to be kept a secret? The public has a right to know. Journalists have a right to investigate. And that's just not being allowed. So they talk about uh, governance and funding if you go to the direct website. And the um, we know that the, this is a steering committee governs a foundation and designates chairs or co-chairs. And um, so they they want to have this private entity of sorts. 
And like Pasta said, it was it was founded a long time ago in 1954. We're not going to go over all of that. I just wanted you guys to see that, you know, they explain this, they're explaining themselves because of the fact that a lot of people started speaking out and they put out, you know, the website. So they explain sort of the surface of what they're doing, but they don't really admit the obviously the decision making. Um, and of course, anybody would love to be a fly on the wall of that. But some of the topics that they were discussing on slide 19 were, you know, geopolitical realignments, which is exactly what we've been talking about. Uh, NATO challenges, China, Indo-Pacific realignment, uh, Russia, government and economy, disruption of the global financial system, disinformation, wow. energy security and sustainability, post-pandemic health, fragmentation of democratic societies, of course, in their terms of what they consider democratic societies, uh, trade and deglobalization. So, the, you know, their agenda is globalization um, and Ukraine, uh, of course. So yeah, I mean, at least they got a chance that they you know, had a little compassion in the heart to eventually get to number 14 Ukraine. Now ah, we might as well talk about it. If I am saying, I mean, they're going to talk about Ukraine in their terms of what they talk about Ukraine. Like, exactly. how do we destroy Russia? How do we, you know, how do we help uh, keep control over our de facto neo-colonial state of Ukraine, because a lot of people say Ukraine's a sovereign nation and it stopped being a sovereign nation the moment the United States put in their puppet. And and then of course the rest is history. So um, there's a list of participants. I'm not gonna say all of them, but you guys can see in slides 20, uh, there's just so many familiar names too, of for, like important people, you know, there are some media people too, but they're part of it. They're not there to question. They're there to, you know, really uh, just go along with the agenda. CEOs from AG, you have- um, Albert the, Worla is another name to pay attention to. CEO of Pfizer's there, as well as Bill Burns. Yep. Uh, then slide 21, you guys can see more of these names. Um, there's just so many, so many people of power in this. So you can't tell me that this isn't a, uh, something important to, to come in there. You can see Henry Kissinger's name, mm -hmm. Reed Hoffman, um, just, just so many, um, different, you know, I don't understand Patrice is still just hanging around, man. I, I was <laughs> thinking like, that when I saw that, <laughs> the surprising names, I don't think it's super surprising to see that, uh, Stacey Abrams was one of the attendees and one of the chairs. Yeah. We're going to show yeah. that too. Cause she, you, you know, yeah. you caught that. And I was like, wow, this is, you know, I mean, I expected, I don't expect less from her, but that's really nefarious, uh, in my eyes, Kristen cinema too. Yeah, another I mean, name. Well, I think the Center for American Progress for Stacey Abrams was a stepping stone to get to, to Bilderberg. Yeah. So congratulations, Stacey Abrams. You made it to the top. Yeah. So um, it, it, it's crazy. We got a, a sitting Congress, uh, sorry, Senator, sitting Senator Jake Sullivan, of course, like we mentioned. And um, so Pasta, you said, yes, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Stacey Abrams is co-chair of the Globalist One World Ruling Government, Predator Class Vulture Organization. And you guys will see the steering committee co-chairs, and then you can see the, uh, the 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 members of the steering committee, including Stacey Abrams and other uh, mm -hmm. groups, other people. So really, it's uh, <laughs> it's everybody that yeah. you would expect. I think Kevin Scott, too, the CTO of Microsoft, is something to think too yeah. about as well. A lot of people kind of don't mention that. They're they're quick to mention, you know, uh, Eric Schmidt. Uh, old CEO of uh, Alphabet and Google parent company, all that shit, you know, when obviously Peter Thiel, now we can see him playing both sides, which is crazy and stuff like that. But Kevin Scott from Microsoft, that's another one too as well, because I believe, and Oz, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, there's a lot of software that's used by the Pentagon, intelligence and whatnot that does come directly from Microsoft. So making sure that every single aspect of our, 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 uh, of, of our tech companies are in play to control, ultimate control of, uh, you know, uh, what could be said, what can't be said, the, the ultimate security state, you need to make sure that Microsoft is involved and they are on the highest level as well. All right, so let's go ahead and play uh, Max's video. Uh, basically, he, he did this whole thread and he's, you know, him and Franco both uh, were one of the few people that actually went and, uh, he said he attempted to enter the DC Mandarin's Oriental Hotel, which was kept secret. And um, 
the, all these people are there that we just mentioned. So uh, you'll see how they reacted when he attempted to enter. even tell you who you're working we have for. No idea. So that's how secretive the builder work meeting is. So none of you know who who's inside. It's not a meeting of national security and big tech elites to discuss Ukraine and the global economy off the record. Allegedly, everyone from Peter Thiel to members of the National Security Council, NATO officials, uh, big tech people, like... I like the way they got it all even, worked uh, up, too, around how like, they're doing some serious bargaining. Even possibly Elon yeah, Musk is in there. Down the people. They the refused to say. They're meeting out. completely off the record. No one was allowed to quote anyone in there. This is where people are saying they're meeting. And, you know, I don't believe that something that involves uh, so many people and so, so many powerful people, uh, I, I think they should have less privacy if they have that much power. Um, and, and if they have that much control over the lives of so many, then you become, I'm sorry, a de facto, uh, if you want all that money, all that power, then you need to be, what you discuss with all these powerful people needs to be open to the public. Because that is that is something that the public needs to know about, and the fact that they can get away with this, and you know, very few people are talking about this, is really uh, insane to me. This has been going on for years too, as well, and it's a lot of people have been shut out. They call people security uh, conspiracy theorists for even pointing the finger over here. But yeah. so much of what they've said in the past has come, you know, just come to fruition that you can't ignore these groups anymore, especially this one. This is one of the top of the food chains. These are these are the policy makers right here, ladies and gentlemen. These are the policy makers. These uh, and and I personally think that you see a lot of junior members of here, whatnot, are kind of getting their their marching orders from the senior members. You know what I'm saying? This is coming right from the top of my mind right here, the Bilderberg Group. So, you know, I'm glad that I think there's more people in in the public who are becoming aware to it, but still not enough people. So it's good with like we're getting out there and showing people how private they're they're trying to be. Why are they trying to be so private? Why, what do they have to hide? Why are all the CEOs with so many lawmakers together? You know what I'm saying? You know, and, and you're right, 1,000% right, fam. They should have to disclose everything that goes on in this this meeting because these these people are you know the ones who are making the policy, not from what we're told, and not what we're sold about an elective democratic government. This is it right here. Uh, exactly. And so this this next video, um, notice how this guy acts and like the we've experienced this before where they take your picture, but this is just 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 watch. It's More private security right here. And some sedans. They're not letting anyone that way for the Bilderberg meeting. Were you in the Bilderberg meeting? Yes, you were in the Bilderberg meeting. You don't know. Were you in the meeting inside the hotel? Yes. It's an off-the-record meeting, I know, and it's secretive, but can you turn your lanyard around? Hi, I'm Max Blumenthal. Were you... Why, why won't anyone say? It seems undemocratic. I mean, these are people who decide 
have a huge influence on policy. They're talking about a war right now that could turn into a, a world war, a nuclear war, and they won't even say what they're saying. That's democracy. This is the, and many of them uh, claim to be democratically elected leaders, but they're meeting in secret with leaders of multinational corporations and big tech and the defense industry. Monarchy used to go to these things, fam. King and queens of Netherlands were always at these puppies, man. Forget about it, you know? And, uh... <laughs> I mean, the, the fact that he's like, I don't know if I was... Uh, come on. Come on, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We, yes. we, know what, we know what you're doing. Um, oh. And I'm not going to show all the videos, but this is the one I am going to show uh, the uh, how uh, Freeman Reporter, and this is a guy that was in a video with another guy where they were talking about if you if you put it on your YouTubes, Bilderberg, they're going to like take you out like out, out, out the algorithm and they're going to throttle everything. Um, and so he talked a little bit about the uh, the location and confirmed that it included the Dutch prime minister and administer uh, Mike Mullen. And yeah, so let's go ahead and watch that one. Josh Friedman, you've been here since yesterday morning. Can, can you confirm this is the Bilderberg meeting? I can confirm that, but it really took me a while to confirm that. The announcement about the meeting didn't come out until Thursday afternoon. So many of the participants had already been here. I arrived early Friday morning and I had to do some scouting around, not just here, but at elsewhere in DC to really confirm that it was happening here. And at that point, I really still hadn't confirmed it. Once I actually ran into uh, Admiral Mike Mullen, retired, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and he was wearing his, his uniform. His, I would call it his. his stripes. I would call it no, not his uniform. He 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 had his uh, Bilderberg badge on, oh, and right, the, right. the the uh, white ribbon around the neck. So that confirmed it. A couple other things. I, I got a photo of Dutch uh, Dutch Prime Minister. So eventually, yes, I did confirm it, but it was not in. It's not like years past. It really took a while. Right. Um, the hotel itself has been lying to people who call and said it was reserved by some hotel, some Hong Kong business group. I had not called the hotel, but I had heard that as when I showed up here early yesterday morning, I spoke to some neighbors, some people walking their dog who live in the area, and they told me that they were told that yes, the hotel was rented out for the weekend by the Hong Kong government. At least that's what these, right, these right. neighbors told me. Okay, and, and just like in one minute, why, why do you think it's significant to cover the Bilderberg meeting? What's happening here and what's wrong with it? I travel around the world covering geopolitics, and to me this is first and foremost a geopolitics meeting, as it is every year. But I think this year is very significant for a few reasons. One, Bilderberg hasn't met since 2019. That's a long time. They've got a lot to discuss. A lot has obviously transpired since then. And then... You also at this meeting have with the backdrop of everything going on in Eastern Europe with Ukraine and Russia and Finland and Sweden's bid to join NATO. You have the Finnish prime minister here, I believe. Uh, you have, of course, the Stoltenberg, the NATO chief. He's here very regularly. So you have the two of them presumably talking. I don't Finland, didn't they just join NATO, fam? Yeah. Well, yeah, that's that's the whole thing, right? So... Um, and of course, everybody's been talking about the fact that we might be in a nuclear war soon because the U.S. is pushing Russia's buttons by saying they're going to uh, support NATO's going to support rockets uh, launching. Um, and if they do that, uh, Lavrov and others have already said that the, the Russia will respond. And th these are these people. They're they're literally discussing su such important things. And, um, you know, you have this post on here. Who is the Bilderberg group? Yeah, uh, well, I wanted to show a little clip, and I wanted to show a little bit from Jason Burmes, who came on the show. He's the one who really got the whistle out there. I think it was that gentleman's video he showed. Uh, they kind of collaborated together, uh, mm -hmm. Jason and someone else. I don't know if it was this gentleman in particular, but when he was on the show Friday, he was like, that's it. Sound the alarms. Like Jason was ready to jump in the car and drive like nonstop to try to get there. That's how, you know, uh, yeah. how long he's been covering this. Now, this is he's got a bunch of a... Uh, videos uh, of whatchamacallit uh, documentaries on his website on youtube they're still there until they take them down 
Uh, in the the first time I, I learned a lot about it was Shade, the motion picture. We had like a 20 minute group talking about what's going on with the Bilderberg group and all the old school people were there. Mike Tracy was there. Uh, uh, of course, your boy uh, and, and Alex Jones showed up and whatnot. There was a lot more people back then because I had a little bit more jump on the information. And guys like uh, him and Luke Radowski have been talking about, about this for quite some time. Here's a little video. I just took a little clip of it from kind of discussing and telling and, and explaining to people what the Bilderberg group is, because I mean, there's a lot of people who've been, you know, going through life fam. They've been taught to say that Congress or elected people that decide and make policy and then eventually try to get that to, you know, be enacted. They're not, they're just the policy uh, enforcers. The policy makers are coming from these groups right here the Bilderberg Group. So take a little quick look at this video. I just got a couple minutes of it. 1954, that is even smaller in number and has a greater influence on world events. Meet the Bilderberg Group. This elite group meet annually around the globe. There is a core group of members who have attended every year for decades, such as David Rockefeller, Henry Kissinger, and Queen Beatrix of the Netherlands. These members invite others who are politically and socially relevant at the time. Each year, around 140 people are in attendance. on my way to Russia, I was invited to go to Bilderberg by Vernon Jordan, a friend of mine, and a genuine hero of the civil rights movement. And to the best of my knowledge, NAFTA was not discussed by anybody in my presence. Documents released by the group in 2001 revealed that in September of 1955, the group met in Germany and covertly outlined the idea of a European Union. Section E, European Unity, discusses the general support for European integration and unification and the idea to unify Germany once again with the rest of Europe under a common marketplace. Belgian Viscount and current Bilderberg chairman Etienne Davignon told the EU Observer in 2009 that the next Bilderberg meeting could improve understanding on future action in the same way it helped create the Euro in the 1990s. This illustrates the patience, vision, and reach of this organization who was able to promote and establish both the European Union and a European currency over the course of just under 40 years. Think about that, how you can start a European Union along with a European currency and European uh, cooperation and military uh, actions. And then that's what started. That's what came out of the Bilderberg Group. They outlined it. This is what we're going to do. They put it in place. And that's when you get when you have a lot of people who can come together of that significance, of that much power. Uh, here's another tweet we have as well. Uh, I wanted to put this one up as well because it was just one of the first tweets I shared by Teddy uh, Schleifer. And here, here, here are the Silicon Valley folks participating in the Bilderberg Conference held in Washington this weekend. Sam Altman, Eric Schmidt, Peter Thiel, Reed Hoffman, Alan Karp from Ballantyre, uh, Ian LeCun, and Kevin Scott, which we just talked about just recently. All the heads of the a big value are there to take their marching orders to understand who they're allowed to, who who they have to censor, who they're allowed to let speak, who they're allowed to let thrive. Uh, it is complete control. And here's just something I pulled off from Wikipedia about who Peter Thiel is. Uh, Peter Thiel uh, is a Danish philosopher. <laughs> I try to say stuff. Peter Andres Thiel, a German American billionaire entrepreneur, venture capitalist, and political activist, the co-founder of PayPal. Palantir Technologies and Founders Front. He was the first outside investor of Facebook as of May 2022. Thiel had an estimated worth of 7.2, 7.19 billion and was ranked 279th on the Bloomberg Billionaires Index. And here it, uh, it, we, as we know, Peter Thiel then invested in Facebook. Number slide number 35. Facebook director Peter Thiel invest conservatives, then he invests in Rumble. So now we're controlling both left and right media out there. Mike Tracy made a tweet. Recent fans of Peter Thiel seem rather surprised that he's a Bilderberg attendee, given the nature of the right-wing causes he currently funds. Joke's on you then. This is at least his 12th meeting since 2007. 
Few have ever in uh, had, few have ever evinced greater dedication to cause of globalism, uh, and that is Peter Thiel. And that's something to kind of point out. Something we have to realize: the fact is that you think that a lot of people, because they're conservative, they're fighting against this whole machine. No. They're actually part of the machine. Peter Thiel is just that. So when people go running to rumble thinking it's a, a beacon of free speech and safety and whatnot, they are completely being duped. Uh, Luke Wendowski, one of those guys, old school, like what Max just did showing up, that's been done for years by guys like Jason Berman, Luke Wendowski. One of the things I remember watching was Bill DeBerg in 2019, where Luke Wendowski ran into Eric Schmidt, who was then, who just left Google and the parent company, uh, alphabet and once again a guy who's got a lot of tentacles in control of speech take a look at luke wendowski slide number 37 running around the streets with eric schmidt of course our youtube and gmail accounts were never the same we were one of the first channels on youtube to be hit with demonetization and of course many people even popular channels like the ron paul channel complained that whenever they put my name in the description or tags or anywhere on their videos their videos would be automatically demonetized. Over 12 people I have confirmed now, whenever they put my name anywhere on YouTube or we are changes name, the name of this YouTube channel, their videos were automatically hit. Downranked in the algorithm with, of course, demonetization. That's why our future, our journalism, our investigations here most likely don't have a future. So please consider signing up on our email list, which again is a free email list. We send out one email, if that, once a week, just so we can have communication with you one-on-one -on -one to avoid censorship and keep independent media alive. Now here's the confrontation and my breakdown afterward. Mr. Eric Schmidt, how are you? Hope you're having a good day. My name is Luke Adowski of We Are Change Art. Is it okay if I ask you a couple questions? I see you're having a nice stroll here in Switzerland. How are you? How's your day? Mr. Schmidt, there's a lot of uh, big tech uh, people here uh, this year. There were last year as well. And since then, we've seen the removal of a lot of conservative voices online. Is that stemming from discussions at Bilderberg? What's your take, especially with your role that you played in the fake news um, kind of dialectic that you put out there with the nonprofits that you supported? You work close with Hillary Clinton, and there does seem to be some kind you of collusion. believe this? Well, I'm asking you. You clearly do. Uh, okay. Well, let's oh, not, let's, let's not, let's well, not curse here. Well, we don't want this video to be demonetized on YouTube. <laughs> let's correct the narrative. Yeah, you can correct. Maybe we'll have correct a them. political stage. Maybe that's Enjoy your evening. Correct. If we're incorrect, we would love to have a word from you to correct the record. Civilly, Google, without curse words. Uh, a neutral company? <laughs> well, he's no longer at Google. He's no longer at Alphabet. He left. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Eric Schmidt, I just want to He's leave the opportunity. Eric Schmidt, Eric Schmidt, I just want to leave the opportunity. If you ever want to have a clarification of the facts, we would love to hear you out. We would love to have any statement from you. We would love to open up a dialogue. I think it would be great to converse with one another. And uh, if you believe that that was doo doo, uh, <laughs> we would need a little bit more evidence because everything else points to the contrary of that. All right, Mr. Schmidt, have a good one. And uh, this is why we have online censorship, because secretive establishment billionaires don't like investigative journalism. Now, there's a couple of important things I wanted to mention uh, in this video specifically about the questions I was bringing up with some contextual background here, because again, this was a very random confrontation. We were about to walk down a totally different street until I said, no, I don't know why. I was just, let's just walk down this street. And as soon as we started walking down, literally, Eric Schmidt is walking directly towards us. And the first thing that I wanted to talk about specifically with Eric Schmidt was the fact that it was his company and him that funded a nonprofit called First Draft, which according to all the records, looks like it was the first nonprofit to use the term fake news in our political dialogue before any war. So there you go. That was the reason why we saw a lot of censorship. The one thing I want to do correct, it wasn't Luke Grindowski, it was somebody walking with him saying, we've seen the removal from a lot of conservative voices. Conservative voices aren't the only ones that remove or demonetize. As you know, we're sitting here right now, me and Fee, we started this channel. We were considered leftists for many years. We've been shut down. We've been silenced. You know what I'm saying? So it's any dissenting voice, anybody who's pushing back up against the government, and that's 
what we're seeing right now. And the fact that, you know, this is, and like I said, I was really, this is, I was one of the first videos that kind of really turned me on to Luke Lewandowski when I saw it in 2019, because I, I wasn't in his circle. I wasn't in that echo chamber. I was outside of it. And then I went to look at a lot of his work. He's done outstanding work when it comes to uh, the Epstein cases and whatnot. Uh, you can occasionally catch Luke um, most of the time on Tim Pool's channel, uh, but that was just some amazing work he caught right back then. And yeah, this is a, uh, this is what we're talking about for many years. That's why you have a fence now. That's why you have a gate there uh, in the Mandarin in uh, DC because they don't want like situations like this to happen over and over again because they were constantly happening as more people were getting caught. One person I think didn't want to get caught this weekend as well, her name is Kristen Cinema. As you know, she is too busy to provide Arizona with regular health care. She's at Bilderberg meeting with Pharma CEO. And she's there kind of hanging out, you know, and they've been making this whole kind of situation when they're making her look like a maverick where she's pushing back, uh, hanging out with these CEOs and tech behemoths. Uh, predictably, she's shoveling precious public funds to extend big tech telehealth care services and because that's the marching she orders she gets. And you can see her here, slide 39, Kristen Simina. Uh, name one of the Times most 100 influential people of 2022. So you can see that they're using your media tactics and whatnot, their media uh, goons to push Kristen Cinema while she's there taking marching orders from a bunch of global elitist slide 40, which is another getter. We have to throw a little getter into the mix because the conservatives deserve a little love in this particular situation because it was mostly a lot of them that were at these meetings trying to figure them out, whatnot. Uh, this might be new to a lot of uh, some leftists around there and whatnot, but it's time to open your eyes because it's not Congress who's calling the shots. It's these guys. This is the obsolete uh, man, and it has all the names we talked about. James Baker, Office of Secretary of Defense of the Pentagon. Albert Borla, CEO of Pfizer. That guy's been running his mouth left and right. And now you know what he's all about. He's here at Bilderberg. He's got to get his marching orders from the elites as well. Collaborate with them. Bill Burns, head of the CIA. Oh, does that one surprise you? I don't think so. Um, and the names go on and on. All the names we mentioned, Kevin Scott, Jake Sullivan, another one there. All the heads, all the people who make these incredible important decisions are there at Bilderberg. Uh, it is wrapping up today, and they will be off like a prom dress as they have gotten all their stories together, all their lines together, all their plans together. That is what's going on at Bilderberg, and that's what we have to expect. And I'm glad we're getting some eyes on this situation. People are starting to take it, take it of some serious importance, and that's what we need to continue to do, uh, because these seem to be the people who are pushing our policy, not the Nancy Pelosi's, the Chuck Schumer's, the Kevin McCartney's, and whatnot. <laughs>